But God is bringing us out to bring us in. And whenever God gets ready to bring us into a new place, the biggest challenge God has is not with the enemy. It's not with Pharaoh. It's not with armies. It's not with chariots. It's not the Red Sea. It's not topography. It's not geography. It's not a desert that has no water. The biggest challenge God has whenever he wants to take us out of one place into another place is us. It's preparing us. And that's why I want to talk to you about preparation for entrance. Preparation for entrance into the promised land. And I think in a lot of ways, King David is a type of what we're going through and what we've been through. King David is my boy. When I get to heaven, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake Paul's hand. I'm going to jump on Jesus, but I'm going to sit down and talk to David. David had a heart unlike anyone else. David grew up in the Old Testament time in a, in a time when, when church was nothing like it is right now. Church was full of blood and guts. You bring an animal to church, you slit his throat, you let blood gush on everything. It was very uh, law-oriented and very legal, but David had a heart unlike anyone else. David had a revelation 1,500 years before his time. He loved God. He talked about intimacy. He was out in the wilderness worshiping and honoring and loving God. And David is the one who began to understand the heart of God and the scriptural commentary is he's a man after my own heart, but he wasn't born that way. God got him ready. Tell somebody he's about to get you ready. Because before David, there was a dude named Saul, and Saul had so many issues and so many things going on in his life. God said, I can't do what I want to do with Saul, so I'm going to choose out a man after my own heart, but I ain't in a hurry. I'm going to work with him until all the soul that's in him gets out of him so when he gets to the throne, he'll be able to do what I want him to do on the throne. And David's life kind of shows where we've been over the last number of years. There are five prophetic seasons that David went through. The first season is a Bethlehem stage. David's minding his own business out in the wilderness keeping his sheep. And the prophet comes to his house. Prophet Samuel comes to Jesse's house and said, God said, one of your sons are going to be anointed king. And he looks at Eliab, the oldest one. He says, surely this is the Lord's anointed. God said, no, I've rejected him. I don't look at the way man looks. I look at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. Well, maybe it's this one and not this one and not this one. Uh, Jesse, do you have any more sons? No. Well, yeah, I got one, but it can't be David. He's from Corinth, Texas. It can't, it can't be David. <laughs> It, 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 it can't be David. He said, we're not going to sit down until he comes. David comes skipping in, young 17-year-old little ruddy kid. And God said, this is the Lord's anointed. Get him ready for me. Oh, T.D. Jake said it years ago in the city. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because something's coming upon you. You don't understand it. You don't know about. And he said, get, get him ready. We're going to anoint him with oil. And David was anointed king of Israel. And as soon as he got anointed king, guess what he did next? He went right back out there to take care of the sheep. Because the first thing God will ever do in your life is test you with small things. Test you with little things. Test and see if you could be found faithful when nobody's looking. Test you and see if your heart can be his when nobody's looking. Test you and see if when there are no accolades, there's no praise, there's no commendation, there's no stage that you can be found faithful. And David went right back out there to keep the sheep even though he was anointed king. And one of the things that frustrate us the most is we know we're kings, but what are we doing walking behind sheep? Sometimes there's so much pro promise and prophecy but so little reality, and there are things that are in us that we know God has said, and God has decreed, and God has put in us, and there are things in us that we know are about to break out. We know we're pregnant with something, but why is the baby not coming out? And many times we say it's the enemy, it's the devil who's doing this, and the devil who's doing that. Let me tell you something. God is much bigger than the devil. God created the devil. The devil can do no more than God allows him to do. He's not the reason why we haven't gone in. God is getting us ready. He's dealing with us. He's testing us. He's preparing us to enter into the land. When God got ready to deal with Pharaoh, he sent one 80-year-old dude with a stick. Had three AARP cards in his pocket. Brought down the greatest, 
empire that ever lived. The devil is not our problem. The enemy is not who's holding us back. God is doing something in our life. God is preparing us to begin to enter into the land. God is getting us ready so that when we get there, we could sustain that which he has for us. David is tested. Small beginnings. Anointed king walking around at night with a pooper scooper. Picking up sheep crap. Laying out under the sun, just him and sheep alone. King! But sheep. God looked at him. Said, I like that boy. He's spending his time out there worshiping me and loving me and cultivating a heart for me. There was a day when David had to go back home to see his father. And the Bible says David left the sheep in the hands of a keeper. And God said, he's faithful. I can trust him with my work. And David begins to enter into the second phase of preparation. That's the Gabeah season. David goes back to his father. Father said, go and take some, uh, some hummus. I guess y'all like hummus. Go and take some hummus to your brothers. Raisins, food. They're out at the battlefield. David comes to the battlefield. His brothers are out there. Saul and, and the army's lined up. For 40 days, they've been challenging the Philistines. This guy named Goliath is coming down into the valley. 40 days, twice a day, challenging Israel. He says, send me a man to fight. And whoever wins, then everybody else will be servants. So David comes when Goliath comes down. And Goliath says, send me a man to fight. And David said, uh, who is this uncircumcised ne Philistine? Did, uh, he should defy the armies of the living God. Uh, who, who this is? Sometimes you got to get ghetto on the enemy. Sometimes you got to just lose your mind on the enemy. Sometimes you got to just talk smack to the enemy. Who the heck is this? All the grown men are running. David said, tell me what the king said will happen to the guy who fights him. He said, well, he'll make your house tax-free in Israel, uh-huh. He'll give you riches and honor, uh-huh. He'll give you his daughter to marry. Say again, his daughter. <laughs> tell the king, I'll go fight with him. <laughs> king Saul, we found a man to fight. Where is he? Saul's looking up. No, it can't be you. It can't be you. David said, you don't understand. I've been faithful. I've been tested and found faithful because one time a lion came to eat up a sheep. Now, if that was me and you, we might have said, man, I've got about 150 sheep. Lion took one, got 149 left. It's going to be all right. Let's go. But not David. There was something so faithful in David's heart. David said, I'm not going to lose one sheep. And he said, I went after the lion and I took the lion out. Then I went after the bear and I took the bear out. And he said, this uncircumcised is going to be just like one of them. He not only was found faithful to God, he was beginning to be found faithful to himself. If we're going to go in, we not only need to know that God's going to be with us, we need to know that we're going to be all right in God. There's a two-way street. We've got to trust our gifts, our talents. We've got to fit into our moccasins. We've got to wear our shawl. We've got to understand the gifts and the graces God's given us as we begin to go into the land. We can't just, it's not all God. God wants this sweet partnership with us David said I know who I am I dealt with a bear I dealt with a lion and I'll deal with this uncircumcised Philistine I love the story David picked up five rocks ran at the Philistine talked smack to him you come to me with sword and spear the Philistine said I, I he's the David said I come to you in the name of the Lord we know what happened he took off his head Israel won a great victory that day but on that day David enters a second phase of his preparation. Tell somebody he's getting you ready. He's getting you ready. He's getting you ready. David goes from obscurity to nobody knowing his name except his family, to being in the wilderness, in the desert, to now being tested with early promotion and success. Everybody knows David's name. David went from Bethlehem to the White House. He's now on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, and, and all the stations every day. He's being tweeted about more than anybody else. He's on Instagram, on Facebook. The whole nation is talking about David. There were some women who cut a new CD. It was a bestseller. You should have heard it. It was called Saul has slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. Everybody was singing the song all over the place. And God said, now that people know your name, I want to test you and see if you can handle success. 
Let me tell you, success kills more people than trouble. Some people can't handle the, pressure, the, the, handle the pressures of success, the pressures of popularity. I, I heard a guy the other day on TV looking at Benny Hinn or one of these, these big guys, and he was kind of criticizing. And the Lord said, shut up. He said, you could never withstand the pressure he's under. To be a rock star in the eyes of people, you could never just shut your mouth. And sometime if you don't know what to say, you ought to say nothing at all. So God will take us to a place and test us with early promotion and success. And David is the man now. He's serving Saul. He is a man as a young guy. But here's what the Bible said. David behaved himself wisely. He embraced humility. He walked in wisdom. He cared for the soldiers that were under him. He represented God well, and God said, I like that boy. I can trust him. Then he enters the third prophetic season of his life. It's called a cave of Adullam. Saul's jealous of David. He realizes David is set to be king, and he sets to kill him. And one day, David is in the house playing music with his hands so the demons can leave Saul alone. And Saul picked up a javelin to cast it at David. Isn't it amazing that the very person that cast your demons out, you want to kill him? 